Could you not? Could you not fucking kick me off, please? Dickhead. The hell was that for? Anyway. Right, I've read this. <laughs> Fuck it, are we doing it again? Fuck it, I'll read it again. Because I'm not going to bother uploading, what was it, like a, a minute long fucking video. After, before streamers kicked me off. Fuck it, we'll read it again. <laughs> it's Halloween night. Veronica Ashcroft and her mania for Halloween parties are putting new twists on a 110 old tradition. It isn't a very nice night for a party. The rain has been pelting down since early morning, but the weather hasn't deterred many guests. The ballroom at Ashcroft Farm is filled with oddly costumed vis visitors. The rather ridiculous western outfit you are wearing was the only thing you could find at the costumers on such a short notice, but it's out of place only for its relative sobriety and taste in this crowd. Ballroom near the bar. This is the south end of the ballroom at the bar. Elsewhere, in this large ballroom, there are scores of other party guests dressed in all sorts of outlandish costumes. On the dance floor are, see are some of the older dancers. The band is playing Breathless. On the periphery of the room, small groups can be seen discussing everything from politics to local scandals, and we're back to where we were before. Streamlabs? This time, when I press enter, I would like for you to not end, end the stream. Please. Thank you. The bartender is busy behind the bar. His only concession to the party, a small domino mask. Nope, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I didn't do anything there. It just went... Samuel Ostman, enjoying himself hugely as a vampire, is here. I don't know who that is. A sheik, who we can recognise as Michael Wellman, and a fairy queen, presumably Veronica Ashcroft under her ornate mask, are discussing something with a small group of guests near the fireplace. The sheik notices you and waves for you to join them. What? Oh, okay. Uh, go west. Sure. Ballroom near the fireplace. Fucking hell. <sighs> now my throat doesn't give way. This is the south end of the ballroom. A huge field stone fireplace dominates the south wall. The bar is to the east. Elsewhere in this large ballroom, there are scores of other party guests dressed in all sorts of outlandish costumes. On the dance floor are some of the older dancers. The band is playing breathless. Yes, we know this part. On the periphery of the small room, small groups. Yes, yes, Michael. Titania, Queen of Fairy, is here. Titania, Titania, is from Shakespeare's, what's it called, Midsummer Night's Dream? I'm fairly certain that's where she comes from. Michael, costumed as a sheik, is here. A sheik? A sheik or a sheik? The sheik, Michael, lots of greeting. The weather out, here, out there is horrible. Ah, yes. In fact, you could say it's frightful. But the fire, oh, so delightful. <laughs> Glad you can make it. He introduces you to the group around him. And you already know Veronica. The fairy nods in your direction. You might find this worth adding to your story, he suggests. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be a um, reporter, I think. Veronica is discussing an upcoming horse show. One of the horses, named Lurking Gru. We will never escape Zork. <laughs> Zork, will, Zork will be here forever. Will appear. And she describes its attributes in glowing detail. Muffled only by the ornate mask covering her face and slurred by the by the effects of whatever liquid it has it is she has in a large glass. Okay. Emphasizing a point, she waves the glass on high, but it's affected by her coordination as well as her speech. Well the glass is affected by her speech. I think you mean as much as her speech. That yeah. A bright red liquid punctuated with ice cubes pours out of the glass and all over her dress. As might be expected, the gown is white. She utters a word that silver-winged fairies aren't usually expected to know and throws the glass to the floor. Michael reaches under his robes and takes out a handkerchief, dabbing futilely at the stain. Veronica snorts in exasperation and pushes him away. I'm going to go clean this up. You just stay here. Okay. Uh. Examine Veronica. Apparently. Yes, I am work. <laughs> yes, I use and walk through. It's fine. Vernon, no. Veronica. Veronica Ashcroft is in her early thirties, about five foot three in height. Ah, she's fucking tiny, mate. Weighing about a hundred pounds, she is wearing a voluminous white gown and silvered fairy wings. Her mask is quite striking. It covers the entire head with a glittery silver stocking. The hair is silver and gold wire streaming out behind as though blown by the wind. The ears are silvered butterfly wings and the eyebrows turn up into antennae. Veronica leaves you and is now near the south entrance. Um, so this probably isn't Veronica, is what I'm guessing. Uh, okay, walk west twice. Uh, this is near the south entrance to the ballroom. The fireplace is to the east and the long hall is visible outside the entrance. 
Elsewhere in this large ballroom, there are scores of other party guests dressing in. Yes, 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 yes. On the periphery. Yes, 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 yes. Veronica leaves the ballroom. Okay, where's the again? This is almost the southern end of the long north south hallway. A large doorway opens into the southern end of the ballroom. Under the door on the west is to a small closet. Smythe the butler, butler is helping a guest with his coat. You reach the vicinity of the coat closet, but you must weave your way around the butler and a guest. Smythe is taking the guest coat to hang it up, and the two of them are blocking the hall. The guest turns to stare at Veronica as she rushes by and bumps you. Now Smythe, whose vision is not improved by the gorilla suit he is wearing, becomes entangled in the guest's overcoat. Unfortunately, it's still attached to the guest, and the two of them nearly fall to the floor. You are entangled in the confusion. Veronica heads off to the south. You try to extricate yourself from the undignified tangle, but only see succeed in confusing matters more. Oh dear. Two. Smith almost succeeds in reaching his feet, but the guest pulls him down again by trying to pull his coat back on. You succeed in regaining your feet. Smith regains his composure, 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 yes, composure, and helps you to your feet, apologising profusely. I've gotten your costume all dirty, permit me to straighten it. He removes a small brush from his suit, straightens your vest, and pushes the dirt off. While Smythe is ministering, your, ministering to your costume, the other guest speedily and thankfully departs the area. Smythe sets off to the east, south again. Here, the front hall and a long north-south hall fronting the ballroom intersect. Another hall starts south of here and goes east. Veronica is to the west, heading away from you. Right, so we go to the west then. The front hall, yes, the intersecting halls again. Another intersecting halls. So, uh, I expect we go to the south, yes. The front hall entry hall is dominated by two curving staircases which lead up to the second floor of the house. These have velvet ribbons across them to keep the guests downstairs. In addition to the front door, which goes out to the porch, there are large double doors leading north and small doors leading east and west. The entry is sparsely furnished, imposing but not overpowering. Right. South and west. You have the west entry hall door, morning room. This room is set up for receiving guests, casual conversation, and informal entertaining. Doors lead east to the entry hall and north to the hallway. Several windows grace the southern hall, and a telephone sits on a walnut secretary in one corner. There's a closed window seat beneath one of the windows. All right. Open the curtains. Curtains are open. Good. Look through... No. Window. The rain is slacked off, it's just a drizzle now. Okie dokie. Examine window seat. A window seat is a bench underneath a window that often has storage space inside it. Yes, I know. This I, I used to actually have one in my bedroom. It wasn't a very big bedroom, but it we had my granddad made it, like our little planks of wood, so that I could sit by the window because it was at the front of the house so it had like the bay windows. Great. <laughs> and they got too big for it. I just stepped on it one night, I think. It was very cold. This one overlooks the front of the house and down the hill. In arsenic and old lace, there were several bodies hidden in a window seat. Oh, dear. Open. Window seat. Opened. Look. Window seat. Look. In. Window. Seat. The window seat is empty. The front doorbell rings. Go east. Now the entry hall. Open. Door. Open. Front door. Alicia, wearing a wet overcoat, is here. Alicia enters the house. Thank you for answering the doorbell. Alicia heads off to the north. Okay. Go north. Following Alicia now. East. East. Alicia deposits her coat in the coat closet. Smile to the west, heading away from you. North. It's off to the east. Oh, we're going to the west. Okay, then. There's a large coat closet full of damp coats, overcoats, and raincoats. There's a wet overcoat here. There's a reporter's overcoat here. I assume the reporter's overcoat is me because I am a reporter. Examine wet overcoat. Because the label which lead Lord and Taylor and underneath that in soon sewn script Alicia Barron. Wait, are we not? 
Oh, do we, oh, we went into the closet where she left. Okay, so we found her coat. Okay, so wet, it's wet. Head east twice. Okay. Alright. Ask Ostman about himself. You shouldn't shout, he's not here. Osman stops here. Oh, he just got here. <laughs> Ask Ostman about himself. I'm just a businessman trying to make a profit, trying to keep busy. The astronaut is now near the fireplace. Oh, okay. Ask Ostman about Michael. That's nice, but Michael. Cool. He's pathetic. What does he do? A man should be doing something, or he's just a parasite. The astronaut is now with you near the south entrance. Okay. Well, the astronaut is probably important. Uh, ask Ostman about Veronica. Veronica is a woman with a sure sense of what she wants and a good head for business. Michael is now near the centre entrance. The astronaut leaves you. Is now near the centre entrance. Okay. Ask Ostman about a but about Asher. He's done a lot for this state. Has a good understanding of the needs of the businessman. I contributed to his last campaign. Okay. Ask Ostman about Marston. He's an old dinosaur, a toothy one though. I'd be wary of him. He thinks he's in loco parentis to Veronica and Richard. Okay, and lastly, ask Ostman. Ostam. Ostman. About. Bill. He's going to be in big trouble before he's done. He's already up before the real estate board for unethical practices, cleaning out the escrow accounts, from what I've heard. He and his agents are a disgrace to the profession. I can't believe Veronica invited him. He must be crashing the party. He's certainly got enough gall. Yes or not, is now at the bar. Okie dokie. There you go, east twice. <clears throat> east twice to the bar and wait for Michael to arrive at 9.41. Okay. Wait. Do I keep waiting? No. Uh, hang on, yeah, wait. Michael stops here, yes. Uh, took you waiting, no, okay. B, indeed. Uh, mm -hmm. Ask, oh fuck, okay, ask Michael about himself. We're we doing this now. What can I say? I didn't realise the rich had to serve any function, but decoration and public amusement. That's what I do, and I take my job seriously. He smiles. Ah, parasite, yes. Definitely. Right, ask Michael about Veronica. That's an odd question. She's my wife. I love her. He looks around quizzically. I wonder where she's gotten off to. The werewolf stops here, for fuck's sake. Ask Michael, fuck, Mikael, Michael, about, who's next, Marston. Do, 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 do. Colonel Marston, one of the ablest men I know. He's done a lot with our family trust, and I could always cut on his advice. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to bother. Oh. <laughs> uh. The bastardization, bastardization of one language is a terrible thing. Ask Michael about who's next. Alicia? She's an excellent horsewoman and a good friend of Veronica's. She boards her horses here, so she's here a lot. Right, so is she the murderer? The murder hasn't happened yet, as far as I know. 
about Ostman. Osman would love to buy the farm, but we turned him down. Our roots are here, even though this part of the country is getting so suburban. Some think it's past time to move up country, to make a move up country. Most of the club has already moved. Osman wanted to develop the land as townhouses. Imagine that. Indeed. Oh Christ, ask Michael about... about Linda, someone who I haven't ha actually met yet. <laughs> Michael glanced at Linda. What a rude question. Are you hoping I'll say something derogatory and start a shouting match? Is she here? I don't actually know where she is. Uh. Ah, shit. Veronica and I are quite fond of him. With a little luck, he'll be president someday. The man has a lot on the ball. Ask Michael about a bot. About Richard, whoever that is. Michael glances towards the werewolf. What a rude question. You're hoping I'll say something. Okay, so, okay. The band is sat in its break now, but to fill the gap, a record player is playing Pretty Woman. Okay. Master will arrive at the bar. Okay, ask Marston about himself. Oh, ask Marston. About himself. Well, I'm really semi-retired. I run the Ashcroft Family Trust, but it mostly runs itself. I don't need to be involved in day-to-day -day operation too much, just a decision now and then. Ask Marston about Veronica. Yeah? I can't say that working with her is as rewarding as working with her father was. Still, I can't really complain. Some guests are discussing this year's horse sales. Colonel Master maintains that no stallion went for more than $100,000. It's a fucking expensive horse. Well, Cochrane, it contends that he's wrong. Listen. The discussion intensifies. Michael joins the discussion. I recall a black stallion that went for a high price last year. It was probably over 100000 Colonel Master glares at him. Listen... Colomaster says, I have a good memory for figures. The top price last year was 92,000. I even remember the horse. It was a chestnut, about 15 hands. A beautiful animal. Michael nods, apparently convinced. Cochrane glances at Michael, feeling betrayed. Nonsense, he says angrily. Oh. God. The discussion intensifies. Cochrane takes another gulp of his drink. You're just getting seed out, Colonel. It was a black stallion. I remember who bought it. It was Jeffrey's. So there. He makes a general gesture at finality, almost spilling his drink on Marston, who is beginning to get angry himself. It's 9.54. We're being told. Let's go west three times. Two. Three. Why is everyone coming with me? Anyway, East Hall. This is the beginning of the East Hall. North is along for you. Hulgate is with. Oh, they're all going west. Okay, south again. Open the North Library door. Library. Every inch of wall space here is covered with bookshelves, except for doors leading north and west, and two thickly curtained windows. There are an enormous. There are an enormous number of books here. In one corner of the room is a high-backed, overstuffed Victorian armchair, which looks perfect for reading in. On the right side of the chair is a small side table with a telephone on it. Sitting on the side table can be seen a paperback book. West twice. North twice. Oh, they're all coming in. This is South Lock, Jesus Christ. This is the farm's office. There are filing cabinets, a large and small, a large and a small desk, a personal computer, a telephone, a copier, and other expected office appointments. There are shelves with breeding books and other horsey reference books. Where shelves don't cover the walls, ribbons and prize certificates do. All this is overshadowed by the condition of the room. Papers are scattered everywhere. File folders spill their contents on the floor and on every horizontal surface. A file of floppy disks has been bounced off one wall. And copier toner has spilled on the rug. That'll never come out. <laughs> That's never going to come out. The desks... And file cabinets have their doors drawers open. Doors lead out to the north, west, and south. Covered on the floor is a fairy's costume mask. 
Next to the large desk is a wastebasket. Sitting on the large desk can be seen a manila, manila, manila folder. Slot behind the large desk is the body of Veronica Ashcroft. Her mask has been pulled off, though the rest of the costume was intact. Around her neck is the agent of death, a rope. In fact, it's your lariat, which you got tired of carrying around and hung in the closet with your coat. Michael, Colonel Marston and Cochrane arrive at the office door. Colonel Marston glances through the door. Look in there, he cries. The place, is a sh in the place is a shambles. They see you, and the three of them crown in the room. Could I have just not gone in here? I feel like the best way to not be seen as a suspect is to just not come in here. Ever. At all. <laughs> Why? Ah, <laughs> huh. okay. Examine basket. Oh, fuck. Okay, good. A crumpled business card is on top of the boring trash. Michael and the others look around the room, start, they see the total wreck of the office, the three of them start to search the room, examine the body, and so on. Then Michael says, wait, this is a job of the police, don't touch anything. The others agree, though the astronaut takes some convincing. Michael picks up the telephone and calls the police, his voice breaks towards the end. Michael stares, horrified at the body. Are they all just stop and stare, horrified at the body? Okay. Take. Card. Fold it. Yoink. Yoink. Okay. Ask Bill about Moyeda. The figure lifts its visor. I'm Bill Cochrane. This costume is so hot and itchy, I'm sorry I got it. He wipes his brow. Cochrane is a little unsteady and swallows a little more of his drink before answering. I didn't do it. She wasn't giving me a fair shake, but murder, not me. He steadies himself. Okay. Show Bill the card. Yeah, I just wanted to keep her from doing something she'd regret. I just wanted an equal chance to buy this property. If she's going to sell it, why a sweetheart deal with Osman? I went to her office earlier to try to convince her, but the door was locked and she wouldn't answer. So that was about a quarter of eight. So you can't put this on me. She was still alive then. Everybody saw her. Right. Walk north. And west. What we got? Garage. The garage holds four cars quite comfortably, each with its own separate door. Jesus. After parking, one can leave through the door to the east, which leads to a covered walkway and the main house. At the house end of the garage is an immaculate workbench. In front of the workbench is a battered tool chest. There's a BMW 320i here, and there's a Mercedes 280SL here. Okay. Open chest. Let's see a crowbar. Should I take the crowbar? Take the crowbar. Michael stops here. Okay. Hide behind BMW. You can't hide when someone is watching you. Michael eyes you suspiciously. What are you doing in here? Have you been following my car? What are you doing in it? Ha. Huh. Turn up behind some. Fuck. Ha. Huh. Ask Michael about... This hasn't worked. Like, the walkthrough's wrong. <laughs> and Michael shouldn't have gotten here until 10.16, apparently. Fuck. Shit. Ha. Huh. Five minutes, southwest. Office crumpled to the floors of various cause oh, I'm in the office again. Right, examine Veronica. Right, so we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna see what he does, what Michael does, because the walkthrough was wrong. But well, Veronica is still wearing her costume, stained with whatever she was drinking, her mask has been removed, she was obviously strangled, but there are a few signs there are few signs of a struggle. Okay. Okay. Look under Veronica. Notice a small object on the floor beneath it. Take object. You are now carrying the silver bullet. Oh dear. It was a werewolf. Examine Veronica's hair. Short and blonde. Okay. Southwest. Okay. 
East twice. Maintaining his regal bearing, even though costumes is a good way to nearby. Okay. In one corner of the room is a high back to yes, we're in the library again. Okay. Hide behind chair. Okay. Hide behind chair. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, read folder. The folder is labelled Sale of Ashcroft Farm. Inside is a purchase of sale agreement between the Ashcroft Trust in the person of Veronica and Osman Properties, Sam Osman's building firm. The agreement is dated today. It is not yet signed by either party. Okay. Wait. Yes. Wait. Uh, ha. Um, oh dear. Oh dear. This walkthrough is not correct. Stand. East. Why not? Hide. Behind. Chair. Uh-oh. Go dear. I'm very dry. I coughed and my eye hurt. I don't know how that happened, but I did. Uh, just wait. Is this because I didn't see Michael? Fuck. Yeah, it's not working. Oh, finally, he's here. Do I keep waiting? Yes. This is far later than the game said it would be. To the walkthrough, rather. Michael enters the library. Michael and Colonel Marston greet each other. Then they glance suspiciously around the room. They do not see you hiding behind the overstuffed chair. Michael closes and locks the doors. Then he passes the Colonel a piece of paper, which the latter avidly scans and folds up and stuffs into a pocket. Both men grin. Uh. Alright. Nope. No. Stand. As you move from concealment, Michael and Colonel Master stare at you and then at each other. Okay. Um. Unlock east door. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh dear. North three times. North. 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 Okay. East twice. Take paper. Okay. Read paper. Paper is under the letterhead of an accounting firm. It reads Supplement 1, Investors in Southeast Planning Corporation, Colonel Robert Pat Marston, 50%, and Michael R. Wilman, 50%. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. East of the bar. Okay. Uh, huh. Uh, show folder to Ostman. Is he here? Your audience isn't listening. Where is he? <laughs> Fuck. Let 
24 Osterman. Fuck, okay, where, where could he be? Who's Osman? Talk to werewolf. Who's a werewolf? Who? Fuck. Who are you? None of your business, girl. Ask. Ask werewolf. Fuck. Werewolf about murder. How about that? Who is Richard? Fuck, I wouldn't know. Fuck. Fuck. Right, hang on then. Never mind. West three times. Fuck. The detective grabs you firmly by the wrist and with a practice twist slips the cuffs on you. You're under arrest for the murder of Veronica Ashcroft. The standard one is given. Sergeant Duffy appears as though out of nowhere and escorts you out to the waiting police car or your process are unlocked. In the subsequent trial, you are convicted of second degree murder. There was damning evidence such as the fact that your lariat was the murder weapon. Also, you presumably the last person to see your life since you charged off after her when she spilled her drink. Oh, okay. Finally, several guests testified against you as a nosy and suspicious character. However, the detective and Sergeant Duff Duffy, nagged by doubt, continue the investigation on the road time. Their brilliant detective work unravels the tangled mess behind the murder. You're released, and as you leave jail, you can't but think that if you'd been able to figure out what was going on that night, you might have won yourself a pure surprise. Hmm. Yes, go on then. We'll restart. We'll try again. Okay, hang on. Come on. Skip. Skip. Yeah, west. Okay. Go on. Examine Veronica. Okay, walk west twice. Two. South four times. One. Two. Three. Four. West twice. South. And west. Open curtains. Look through window. Examine window seat. Open window seat. Look inside window seat. Okay, go east, open door, open front door, go north, east, east, north, and west. Examine wet overcoat. Hey. What? Hey? The fuck? How? But there should be one. East, west, that's it, what the fuck? There was one here last time, the fuck? I'm so very, very confused. Because it should be in the same place as mine. What the fine fuck? Okay, restart. 
Something's gone wrong here. I think, so, I think there's elements of randomness to it. <clears throat> Let's try again then. West. Examine. Veronica. V Veronica. Exact. Min. Veronica. Okay. West. West. South. 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 West. West. South. West. Open curtains. Look through window. Yep. Examine window seat. Open window seat. Look in window seat. Go east. Open front door. <clears throat> Follow her, don't we? North, east, east, north, west. I can't stop here. Shit. Ask Ostman about himself. Can we do this other one? Himself. Veronica. Asher. Mar. Marston. Bill. Considering I'm the longest thinking, I'm assuming it is actually going to do this. Fuck. Oh, God damn it! Ask Ostman about himself. Ask Ostman about Veronica. Ask Ostman about Asher. Ask Ostman about Marston. Ask Ostman about Marston. Fuck you. Ask Ostman about Bill. All right, then we go. Uh, east twice. Michael. Alright. It's Michael about himself. Ask Michael about Veronica.
ask Michael about Marston. Ask Michael about Alicia. Ask Michael about Ostman. Ask uh, Michael about Ostman. Ask Michael. Fuck. Ah! No. Shit. Ask Michael about Linda. Fuck you. About Linda. God damn it. Ask Michael about Asher. And the world was Richard, so what's the point? Ask Michael about Richard. Keep waiting, nope. Ah, oh, fuck it. Just listen. I have no idea how much of this is actually important. Microsoft, look here, no need to fight. We've got all the auction records in the office. Veronica gets everything published. We can settle this like gentlemen, okay? Cochrane sees mollified and Marston comments under his best. Some of us aren't gentlemen. All right, fine. All right, so that's what's supposed to lead you to the fucking... <clears throat> office. Uh, huh. Worst three times. Sell three times. Okay. Less twice. And north twice. I mean, a lot of story roots around underneath his robes for a moment. Obviously, tried to find his keys. He could like find them. I had them. I unlocked the wine cellar only an hour ago. Smythe needed to go get it. My keys are gone. He goes, more like, wait a minute. This door isn't locked. Something's going on here. Michael throws up the door to the office and others crowding closely around him. All right, then. Uh, so we need to examine the basket. Take card folder Okay. Ask Bill about murder. Show Bill card. What? Show the card to Bill. Right. North. West. Hide behind. BMW, I'm not picking up the fucking... <sighs> ah, fuck, he wouldn't have turned up, would he? I know, he would have. No. Yeah, he's not supposed to get here until, like... 10th... Wait... What the fuck? Yeah, it's not supposed to get in until 10.16. It's bullshit. Uh-huh. Stand. 
as far as, as you're supposed to be, what are you doing in here? Why are you trying to answer? You've been acting oddly. Did you kill my wife? He breaks off top between silver calls of action. Finally, he just says, get out of here. Ask Michael about murder. What the fuck? You report as of all the sensitivity of Buffalo. Can you leave me alone? Fuck. <laughs> Open chest. Take crowbar. <laughs> See, will, let, will he let me? Yeah, yeah, you will. Okay, fine. Go east. Southwest. Examine. Veronica. Look under Veronica. Take object. Okay. Examine Veronica's hair. South twice. And east twice. Okay. Hide behind chair. Read folder. Wait for who we waiting for? Michael. Yes. It's not right when he's supposed to. He arrives much later than he did walk through says he should. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh no. Oh good lord. Yeah, keep going. It's fucking hell. Both went green. Okay. Stand. Unlock east door. Law three times. Two. Three. East. East. Take paper. Okay. <clears throat> Read paper. West. There's Osman. East to the west, not to the fucking east. Shh, fucking. Show folder to fuck. Ostman. Osman looks surprised. Where did you get that? That's the agreement Veronica and I were supposed to sign tonight. I wouldn't come to a party like this if I didn't have to. Well, actually, I guess I'm having a pretty good time. Osman is... <laughs> I'm fully got fucking murdered. Well, actually, uh, Jesus Christ. Something struck me as odd. She put me off earlier this evening when I wanted to sign then. She said she had some other business to take care of first. She seemed, pre she seemed preoccupied. I tried to change her mind, but she was adamant. Like is now within the south entrance. Okay. So we would have been. Okay, should be here, I think. South three times. I think anyway. So it's south three times, west twice. Fuck it up. Come west twice, north three times and west.
Constantly, yeah, very consistent. Sergeant Duffy waits nearby, ready to spring in action to serve as his superior officer. The detective is examining the telephone, slipped behind the large desk. Yes, 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 yes. Ambulance has finally arrived, attempts to remove the body and stretcher. Right, we're going north again, I think. Yep. <clears throat> West. Open. BMW. Trunk. Uh, open BMW trunk with crowbar. I break into that car. Go to a trust folder. Take trust folder. Drop crowbar. Take folder. Okay, thank you. Read trust folder. The folder is labeled Ashcroft Family Trust. Inside is a thick sheet of documents. Read documents. There are many documents in a stapled bunch. They all concern business and financial matters. On top is a letter from an accounting firm. It reads in part, while it's difficult to make explicit judgments on the advisability of certain investments by the Ashcroft Family Trust, we found a disturbing pattern. In the past 10 years, almost 20% of the trust holdings has been placed in four companies. Each of, which, each of which is at a poor financial risk. As the accompanying documents show, all four are controlled by Southeast Planning Corporation, privately held, with Chief Executive Officer listed as Colonel Robert Marston. Curiously, on the back of the bunch, there is a paper corner left on the staple where a sheet was torn off. Oh dear, oh dear. Walk east, southwest, south, east, and north. Southwest, south. East and North. Find the detective. <clears throat> north. It's off to the north. Detective approaches you. Show detective papers. Paper? <clears throat> Detective looks at the sheet of paper for a moment and takes it. What's the significance of this? Colonel Master and Michael will co-invest us in something. Show detective trust folder. Where do you get this? It's important. This means that Michael and Colonel Master were embezzling from the family trust and further Veronica knew it. Oh dear. Show detective Nilla. No, Manila folder. So the folder from that takes it. If someone wanted to prevent the sale, it might have been worth committing a murder to do. But who could that have been? Show detective business card. There's lots of his government that takes it. This certainly seems to implicate Cochrane. He seems hot-headed enough to commit murder, and the sale provides a motive. Go to the office. Game, game, game. I don't know where I am. <laughs> uh, south? Shit. South? West? North? Here at the office. Okay, good. Take mask. Look. In mask. Fairy mask. Slightly double sweat caught in the silver meshes of dark hair. Oh dear. Examine dark hair. Hair is dark and medium in length. Southwest. East twice. No three times. One, two, three. And west. Examine wet overcoat. Yep, yeah, right, we've examined it now. Take wet overcoat. East, 
North. Two. Three. Four. Dining room. This is the formal dining room. To the south is the long hall. To the east, the kitchen. A crystal chandelier dominates the room, hanging over a large walnut table. On the east wall, convenient to the kitchen, is a long sideboard. On the north wall is a china cabinet. The west wall is mostly windows which overlook the garden. Uh, east. This is a large country kitchen. It is quite disarrayed right now because of the party. There are doorways leading south to the ballroom, west to the dining room, and north to the back entry. There is a stove with a kettle boiling on top of it, and a telephone over a counter to the wall. Ah, take basket. Take the basket. The waste basket. Take it. You're now carrying the trash basket. Beautiful. Go south twice and west. Periphery of the rooms. Osma is near something south of the detective and near the fireplace. Uh, is it west of the fireplace? I don't actually know. I think it's west. Fuck. Where am I? Fuck shit. No. Fuck. Where's the detective? Fuck, the detective colonel in the fireplace, okay? Where am I? I don't know. Why didn't you stop me where to go? Oh, fuck. I've left the fucking room. Shit. I've got no idea what the detective is. Fuck. Well, there's the fireplace. Oh, fucking right. <clears throat> Ask detective to fingerprint 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 glass. Sam Duffy analyzes the broken glass for fingerprints. Sam Duffy takes the broken glass. He seems to always disappear. He's a fine public servant. Comments, comments the detective. This is the same detective from uh, that we played is in the other game, isn't it? <coughs> Give the dark hair to the detective. Okay, give dark hair to detective. The detective takes the mask. Note the hair as you point it out. A dark hair, eh? Veronica's hair was blonde. How did the hair this colour get into this mask? Because the fairy, Titania, the fairy queen, princess, whatever the fuck, was not Veronica. That's why. Because I know, because I guess these things. Um, show Detec Detective Wet Overcoat. Detective looks at the wet overcoat, then takes it. I don't see the significance of this. It's been raining all night, but as far as I know, everyone's coat is wet. Tell detective about weather. Mr. Hughes explained how when Alicia arrived, the rain was falling very lightly, but her overcoat was soaked, which is why you turned it over to the authorities. The detective says that may mean she was here earlier when the rain was falling down, that she didn't arrive when she said she did. Yeah. So it's done it. Head east. Examine. She's still here, which is lucky. Elise. Elise's hair. 
I like how they start letting people leave, though. Medium length and dark. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Ask Alicia about... Car. I parked on the other side of the barn, out of the way of all the other cars. Uh, go west and wait for Duffy to arrive. Wait for Duffy. What is my laptop doing? It's just turned itself on. <laughs> I don't know why it's, it's not on. It wasn't on. But it's just turned itself on. Right, I'm gonna... It doesn't work properly, so I'm just going to turn it off at the plug. And it'll turn off because the battery's fucked. Do I keep waiting? Yes. 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 Sergeant Duffy returns with the analysis. The detective reads it, then hands it to you. It reads, omitting the relevant details. The glass was analyzed for fingerprints. This was difficult as the surface was covered with the sugary residue of an alcoholic beverage known as Singapore Sling. However, partial prints were recovered from a dry area. These were compared with prints of Veronica Ashkoff taken from by Sergeant Duffy at the beginning of, this of his investigation. It is our conclusion that the prints on the glass are not those of Veronica Ashcroft. All right, then. You tell them to arrest uh, Michael and Alicia. Okay. I mean, yeah, Michael is probably the reason why. Alicia was providing cover and Michael probably killed her. Right. Tell... <clears throat> Detective to arrest Michael Alicia. Sergeant Duffy appears with Alicia and Terry, puts handcuffs on the wrist of my school, who stands stiff and quiet. Let's not have any trouble now, says Sergeant Duffy in his unique way. They head for the driveway where a police car waits with engine purring. Congratulations, your testimony as star witness for the prosecution secures the conviction of Michael for the first degree murder of his wife and of Alicia as his accomplice. Not only are they sent to prison with the proverbial key thrown away, but Colonel Marston is convicted in the parallel case of embezzlement and grand theft for his role in the milking of the family trust. Best of all, your syndicated 12-part story of the Tangled Plot and its aftermath wins the Pulitzer Prize. And the book is, is number one on the bestseller list for 42 weeks. Oh, yeah, sure. Not to mention the movie and the book club sales, sure. As your book explains, the murder was triggered by Veronica's desire to sell the farm and move to a more rural area. Even with the proceeds of the sale, still more funds from the family trust would have been required to purchase the new property and build on it. Michael and Colonel Marston were alarmed, as they had been milking the trust by investing in dummy corporations under their control. After a time, Veronica... Ooh, fucking up. Veronica grew suspicious and had the trust dealings investigated. She expected that Colonel Marston would be implicated, but was surprised to find that Michael was an equal partner in the scheme. For Michael, time was running out. He wanted out of the marriage, but not the Ashcroft fortune, and enlisted Alicia's help in the bizarre scheme. Alicia would impersonate the, the murdered Veronica to establish an alibi. Your appearance on the scene as an old friend suggested another red herring, a few pieces of evidence planted, and you might, have, might be framed. Fortunately for all but the plotters, the plans were for naught. The story has come to an end. Right then. No. <clears throat> Well then, that's the story of that. There you go. A murder must fall. Right then. I don't know what the uh, silver bullet was for. But there you go. <laughs> Whatever. Alright then. Yes. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe, have a good day. And until next time. Ta-ra! Bye-bye.